already um doing the stream uh yeah well i'll be on the witch light yeah let's start i guess go ahead all right uh well welcome everyone to session two of lost hearts uh in our last session uh, the party was scattered after defeating Bad Lorna alongside uh, Tasha, and they were scattered uh, throughout the domains, and each of them had to find their way back to the Domain of Delight. Omni uh, met Humility uh, and found out that Humility, uh, a deity from a world that he is from, uh, it had a connection with Omni's family and his father and was intending to bring him back. But through Omni's determination, uh, he instead uh, chose to return back to the domain, uh, gaining humility as the deity for his cleric class. Uh, Aurora uh, appeared back on the stage that uh, she had been very familiar with and was asked a couple of questions uh, alongside giving a brief performance to uh, two foxes that seemed to uh, enjoy themselves. And through her connections, she was able to break through uh, a aura of sorts that was preventing her mother from being contacted. In the future, she will be able to connect with the Sending Spell. And lastly, G uh, had to climb through a dark void and was able to use his celestial self to pull him, but then had a choice to make between two bonds that might bring him back. A strong bond with his sister, or the weaker fledgling bond with Azure. Selecting Azure, uh, G was able to uh, pull himself towards her and was able to get a brief moment of time to see where she was. And although he was not able to pinpoint it directly, uh, he does have some landmarks in which he can go by. At that point, the party awoke all at the same time back at the cabin and was able to learn uh, that the other party is still missing and that they are unfortunately stuck somewhere in between the domains. And given that it might be days, weeks, or ever before they are brought back, uh, Charm suggested that all of you continue on your path towards your goals and that in the future, you might be able to uh, communicate once more. You all had brief moments with members of the Witchlight Carnival, uh, as well as Aurora, uh, taking the first steps towards befriending uh, the Basilisk. And it is friendly to all of you, uh, and as action, you can, as an action, command it to take actions in combat. And you also learn uh, from Omni uh, that Mercian would be joining you for this next leg of the journey as she is continuing to look for the rest of her party that is scattered. And she believes that a wizard ally of hers is in the direction all of you are going, and he will need to be found if she wishes to continue uh, her journey to collect the rest of her party. And at that point, your swamp balloon was uh, boarded, and uh, Trinket, one of Charm's sons, will be your pilot for this adventure. And you all traveled, uh, began the day-long travel towards the next area uh, of the Feywild, Tither. And as you, uh, as we left off last time. Uh, you all saw in the distance several of these wind-up, boy-like demons that are flying 
towards you. They are not quite as close on the map as they appear here. I will say uh, you have about two actions worth of time before they arrive. And so I will hand this over to the party for all of you to decide how you would like uh, to handle uh, this first encounter. Um. <clears throat> Uh, you basically, you have enough time to take two... You have some time for conversation, to talk, uh, and then you'll have two actions of once you've made your plan. Well... Aurora's gonna to start, click clock, middle of the thing, and activate Twilight Century! Woo! I believe Twilight oh, Century is a action. Yes. That's Dora's first action, and just plopping everyone with. Uh, everyone gets seven temporary hit points. I guess. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, so planning. <clears throat> I'm sorry if I keep coughing, I've got some chippy stuff in my throat. Oh. Um DM. What kind of vibe do we get from these things? We get an aggressive vibe, a curious vibe, a going to um, say vibe. Uh, make me an insight check. Uh, what from what you can tell, um, the way that they're flying in this pattern, um, they appear to be uh, like in a scouting formation. They don't have any weapons drawn, or uh, they don't look like they're about to shoot you down immediately, but they are coming towards you with a purpose, is what I can say. These things don't seem to be aggressive, but I should, should still be cautious of them. Do you recognize these things, G? Or do you, Trinket? Uh, Trinket will kind of nod as he uh, kind of slows the ship down just a little bit and he'll turn around. Those are Scabatha's toys. They control and patrol the domain. They're the ones that grab escaping kids and bring them back to her toy house. I don't know what they want, but that's well, probably nothing good if you ask me. Well, you're looking for an escaped kid. <laughs> That'd be me. All right, they're now friendly. Uh... I am going to. I would like to ask uh, what the insight, the insight check would have been the first action, correct? Uh, yes, that would be your first action. As my second action, I would like to cast Bless on the party. Ooh. Ooh. Boop. You're on cleric uh. All right, three of you have the benefits of the Bless spell. And G, what you want? Looking the creatures over, uh, you said that we see the like the wind-up key on their backs. Uh, do we recognize that for what it is? 
Uh, make me a... Make me an intelligence check. Uh, yeah, I would say G would know uh, the basic mechanics of how toys would work, especially given that you come from a carnival. Uh, you know that some clockwork toys like this um, have to rewind themselves after so long, or they uh, tend to stop moving. You don't know the exact mechanics of what that means for bigger constructs, but you would know that basic mechanism. I guess I'll pop my wings up. All right, you poof. Uh, there's a wing here somewhere. There's one. All right. Uh, and Aurora, I believe you have uh, one final action as one well. Final action. Um. All right. Let me just check in if this spell does what I think it does. Uh. Is it the first? Or is it the first? Uh... Okay, Aurora. <coughs> is going to yeah why not he's going to <laughs> say uh, uh, what is to the like where are you oh, oh, there we go. she Aurora is going to say to the Construct that is at the the second from the top, so uh, here. Okay. Uh, if if it's within range. Uh, oh well, just gonna move a bit further forward so it's in range. So, and she's going to say, uh, "What is the most attractive part of a robot?" It's well, but and going to cast Tasha's hideous <laughs> laughter. Okay, gotcha. Uh, uh, wisdom saving throw, you say? Uh, it will fail. And I'll show you what happens. Uh, how high up are we? Uh, very high. Okay, um, will it fall to the ground within a minute? Okay, the target must or fall prone, becoming incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. Okay, Because it is well, incapacitated, as... it cannot use its, use its movement, and because it has a flying speed, and it being unable to fly, it will fall to the ground. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark it for falling. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, there we go. We'll give him a net. Uh, and as they approach um, and they get close enough for you to shoot off this hideous laughter and they notice that one of their companions uh, immediately kind of ceases functioning from this Ha 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 ha, and it just gets quieter and quieter as it kind of begins to fall down. Mm -hmm. uh, that will definitely uh, initiate combat. Uh, so I'll go change the music, uh, and y'all can uh, go ahead and click on your tokens and roll for initiative. Mm -hmm. Oh, wrong, wrong target. What? Target Aurora. Yeah, Aurora. Yeah, there we go. 
Aurora got a two and just uh, renamed the Amalfia to Aurora. Oh, wait, oh, wow. gotcha. oh, she got a seven because advantage. <laughs> yep. It's a Oof. Oof. <laughs> Very. Oh no. Excellent start, everybody. <laughs> uh, this is what happens when I'm off alcohol. <laughs> Uh, let's cool. let's see if uh, Mercian uh, does any better. Not really. <laughs> uh, the Basilisk will be taking the dodge action each turn uh, unless someone gives it a command. Um, Aurora, you have uh, advantage on giving it commands. Uh, the others uh, will have a higher DC of attempting that. Is yeah. it just a standard basilisk? Yes. So I'm adding it uh, to my extras yes. as a pet. Yep, it is a... Yep, it is just a... Actually, no, it is not, because uh, I modified it a little bit for your party. Uh, I will add it to your journals here in just a second. But it has the same uh, bite and uh, petrifying gaze. Uh, abilities, you just have to command it to stare at someone. Right. Oh, All right. okay. That, okay. All right. Oh my lord. No, the, the Basilisk didn't roll a six. That was the toy soldier. <laughs> or the toy demons. <laughs> Alright, where did I put the tunes? The tunes... Copy. All right, uh, this one I'm just gonna kind of, uh, I'm just gonna put him over here for a while. All right, uh, Monsters always go last in my games. Uh, G, Omni, uh, what are your dex modifiers? Three. Mine is a plus four now. Yep, plus four now. Yep. And All right. As a side note on the stream, for those wondering, this song is from Final Fantasy IV, and it is the boss battle theme. I have an unhealthy obsession with this song. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at the top of the round, uh, it is Mercian. Uh, she will... 10, 15, 20. She within range. Uh... Yes. Okay. Uh, she is going to kind of hold out her uh, quarter staff and point at the one to the north, uh, and is going to use divine uh, radiance. Uh, that is a twelve. I, I don't know why she's rolling with it. I gotta turn that off. Uh, the twelve will miss though, as the de the toy demon just kind of like flitters out of the way. That will be her turn. Aurora. Oh, geez. I'm not normally this early. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Aurora is going to uh, use her action to say, uh, uh, Mr. Basilisk? I would appreciate it if you used your stare on the northernmost uh, construct and going to try and convince the basilisk to petrify the uh, dude, that one, um, yeah. Alright, uh, make me an animal handling check with advantage. Alright, uh, the basilisk Kind of nods in your direction and will kind of turn and is uh, going to look at the toy demon. Uh, we'll have to make the choice to look or not uh, on his turn. Yep. And uh, 
with like no bonus actions really. I think. Uh, bonus actions. No, none that I can use. And end turn. All right, uh, G, you're up. Okay. I will equip my shield. Boop. And fly out to meet up with the first one there. And um, attempt to pull the key. All right. Uh, go ahead and make me either an athletics check or an acrobatics check. All right. Uh, it's going to make a uh, dexterity saving throw against you. Oh, it's a tie. Rollies. Uh, just roll a d20. Ooh. Ooh, the low rolls tonight. Yeah, that's my second two. <laughs> Oof. Uh, so you grab at it and try to yank it back, and there's a back and forth uh, session here. You do notice that it is quite protective of that key, though. Um, but at the end, you uh, watch it as it kind of bats you away, and it kind of keeps that key uh, locked into place. Uh, yeah, uh, action surge and pull, try again. All right, go ahead, uh, make an acrobatics or athletics check. Oh, uh, you, the second time through, you grab the key and you just yank it completely out. You watch as gears kind of like begin spittling out out and you notice that this demon is be or this toy like construct is beginning to slow down uh it's still barely moving but you get the feeling like its energy is about to expire uh, i will fly away from and how much did I move there? Um, move back just a little bit. And take the opportunity attack. Yep, uh, you notice as it, um, kind of, uh, or wait. Uh, it cannot make an attack of opportunity at this time. <clears throat> That is... Oh, Marshall check. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is sufficient. Boop. Abduct. All right. The toy demon attempts to abduct a creature by restraining them with a reinforced toy net. A creature must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw or be restrained by a net and carried by the toy demon. Okay. And that being your turn. You get, oh, wrong button. You get 12 temporary hit points. Ooh, the shield. Definitely a better roll than the first one. It... Absolutely. Ooh. Okay, yep, that's all. All right. Omni, you're up. Oh, 
You're muted? Oh. Yep. Oh, damn it. Okay. Uh, oh, Hunter's Mark is bonus action. Uh, I would like to cast it on, uh, you know, the one closest to me over here. All right. Start off with that one. It is Hunter's Marked. And... Well, I got we got the bless, so there's an extra D4. I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take two shots uh, with sharpshooter. So it's gonna be a minus five to this, but I'll add the D4 from bless. First shot. That's a D4. I'd say. Uh, twenty-one. Hit. That will hit. Okay. So at so it's eight damage plus ten plus the damage from Hunter's Mark. Whoop. There's Hunter's Mark. Here's Hunter's Mark. So that's twenty two points of uh, piercing damage. And then the second shot. Let's say 15 to hit. That will hit. Okay, so that's going to be another 15. And if I remember correctly, Hunter Smark is every attack. Whenever you hit it with a weapon attack, so yeah, it's another d6. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be another. Uh, 21 points of piercing damage to it. Oof. Yeah, you shoot two quick shots at the toy demon. Uh, it kind of, both of them go through uh, its metallic body, and you see, like, gears and cogs kind of just begin spilling out of the creature and littering uh, down from the sky. And they would like to do a mushroom check. Okie dokie. I forget, are we, are are we professional with marcher chicks in this campaign or not yet? Uh, not yet in this campaign. Okay. It's just a plus three. Oh, that's an extra one. Oh. <laughs> uh, toys are not some. You kind of have a mental block against toys for some reason. <laughs> I think I know the reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to move a little bit closer to over here. Just a tad bit. Uh, Alright. Uh, let's see how many times you get. Hey, Max again! Dang! Alright, uh... So the toy demon that was hideously laughter, you just kind of hear, ha, 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 ha. It just continues to fall. Uh, the one uh, to the north uh, is going to choose... Uh, actually, I'm going to see if it's going to be smart enough to know to uh, look away from this creature. It is not. Uh, so the basilisk, at the start of its turn... Uh, we'll use the uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yep, that's within range. Uh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Uh, so the toy demon begins to rush forward. Uh, and it is going to take the full effect of the gaze. And is going to use make a constitution saving throw. Oh, no. Uh, so the creature uh, has zero movement speed. Which means uh, it, it starts beginning to... as well. Yep. Uh, <laughs> cue, cue the goofy. Wee -hee 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 -hee. Uh, we'll see if we'll see at the end of the turn if it can save itself and repeat the saving throw. Uh, that's it for that one. Uh, the one that got its 
cog stolen uh, is going to uh, you watch as its arms kind of pull out these little cannons uh, and you watch as these uh, toy trains are shot out uh, towards G. Uh, it's going to make a toy attack. Uh, and a 20 will just hit for 15 points of bludgeoning damage. As like the these toy trains just kind of hit you and uh, kind of begin knocking you around. Uh, the other one is going to move a little bit forward uh, and we'll fire also at G click click uh, but an 18 will miss as uh, its shot toy train just kind of uh, go out of the way uh, so the learn deflect ching ching or I should I guess I should say choo choo uh, <laughs> the the uh, uh, the toy you watch uh, the toy demon takes a bonus action and you watch as the gear on its back begins to wind itself click uh, the other one unfortunately uh, having no key to rotate it uh, is going to begin to falter freeze and begin to plummet as well i'm just gonna move him over here because there's no saving him uh, and the other toy demon who was petrified uh, begins to fall to the ground as well. Uh, it is going to attempt to make a, another constitution saving throw. Uh, da -da -da. Oh. Okay. It succeeds, so the petrification kind of stops and it uh, catches itself. I was not able to make a... Uh, any movement this turn, uh, but it will take its bonus action to uh, rewind its gear. Uh, and both of them are going to uh, kind of gaze Isn't at the party. The uh, con save is at the end of the turn, so it wouldn't be able to rewind its gear. Oh, okay. Yep, gotcha. Uh, so it's gonna it's gonna begin plummeting. Uh, the last one is going to um, kind of see all of this happening, uh, point its uh, little uh, cannon launchers uh, at the uh, the swamp balloon, and will uh, it starts getting a devious look in its eye. All right, uh, it is uh, Mercian's turn. Uh, 20, 25, uh, and she will use Divine Radiance, uh, but a 9 will miss uh, as she just kind of shoots this ball of Radiance outward, and it does not seem to take hold. Uh, Aurora, it is your turn. Um, God, I need to think of the right word. Uh... God, it's two words I want to do. Um, God, you Americans with gun stuff, what's the word for like emptying, the, like dropping the magazine in your gun? Mag dumping? Or no. Quick reload? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Ejecting just... the mag? I guess, um. Uh. Gonna say it really quick, um, like mag dump. <laughs> um, uh, would would the other train cannon thingies attached to the construct, or are they? Is it like holding them? Uh, it's kind of like he's got like a little arm cannon, like Mega Man, uh, on okay. his arms that are shooting the that are shooting the trains. Okay, Aurora is going to. Uh, point at the construct that is aiming its cannon and cast command and she will say detach or detach or something like that okay uh, wisdom save bugger 
Uh, it will not obey your command. Well then, I don't have... Ah, uh, and we don't have Wither and Bloom anymore. Oh well. And, uh... Yeah, that is... That's the action, right? Yep. Um, bonus action, got to uh, do a little dance, I guess, and then turn with the doink. Wait. Oh. Hey, seven. <laughs> no, hell good. All right. All right. Seven sticks. All right. Uh, G, you're up. Fly on my radiant wings up to it. Well, as you noticed, I think we know where this is going. And make another swipe at the key. All right, make me an acrobatics or athletics check. Oh, gee. Oh. Yep. Uh, uh, you grab it and just rip it out in a rage, and you notice, much like previous, it seems to be uh, slowing in its uh, slowing in its movements. And yeah, just a general marshal check as well. Okay. Natural oh, 20. snap. Well, you can get uh, two of these things if you would like, or you can kind of get a, uh, you can kind of get a general insight into what they may have been trying to do here. Um. Uh, could I get, uh, like the insight and one of the items? Oh, yes, yeah, it's insight, it's, uh, two of those things, or, uh, you can pick from the insight. Um, so the insight and the electric malfunction. Okay. Electric malfunction. The toys demons go berserk when they are struck with lightning damage. They attack with disadvantage, but on a hit, they deal an additional 1d6 plus 1. And as you also kind of insight what's going on here, um, you see that this uh, toy demon uh, is kind of like scanning the area. Its eyes are like looking over uh, this ship, looking for something, someone... And you'll hear uh, the creature kind of uh, open its little mouth box, and you hear speak. Runaways not located. Jacques, Gilles, Elizabeth. Not in area. Continuing combat. We'll continue to rendezvous at cave shortly. And that is what you hear. Um, I will remain in the space there for now. Alrighty. Uh, Omni. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I do have a clear shot or a clear line of sight to, towards the one that G is still engaged with, right? Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, sorry, Zach, one more thing. Uh-huh. I'll equip my rape here now that I'm done pulling things. All right. Uh, let me... Uh, are you still having your shield up? Uh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. We got the rapier. Uh, and yes, uh, you do have a clear shot, Omni. Okay. 
since the one that had my uh, Hunter's Mark is still technically alive, I can't transfer it with a bonus action. So I'm instead just going to uh, first just fire off two shots uh, over to the one that G is engaged with. Uh, with Sharpshooter. I'm pretty sure that's going to hit. Yep, that will hit. It's going to be... Oh, that's going to be 22 points of piercing damage. <laughs> nice. And then uh, I'm going to take a, another shot. Uh, that one's probably going to miss. It's going to be a 12 to hit. Uh, that one will definitely miss. Okay. And as a bonus section, I'm going to use one of my uh, War Priest uh, charges. And take another attack. Also Ooh. a charge shooter. Uh, yeah, that will we'll miss. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Okay. Yeah. One more Moucher check for. Uh, that is insufficient. Lots of twelves for me today. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll get much closer. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I'll get over to the side now. Get a little bit closer. All right. Uh, it is the toy demon's turn. Uh, you kind of hear the click clack of it attempting to wind something that is no longer there. Uh, I'm going to see if this thing is smart enough uh, to recognize the plight it is in. It is not, unfortunately. Uh, so it will... Uh, Yeah, it's not smart enough to do that. So it is going to uh, just kind of click, click, uh, and he is going to uh, fire at Omni. Um, all ranged attacks are made at disadvantage with someone mm -hmm. in. Yep. Which, fun fact, did you know they are not in Pathfinder? I learned <laughs> that last night. Uh, but the nine will miss. Uh, and as the creature kind of comes to the end of its turn uh it falters hisses cracks and uh will begin to also fall as it becomes incapacitated that will that will end initiative uh for now well Done. Lots of good use of resources to end that quickly. <laughs> How much um, fall damage got dealt when they hit the ground? Uh, let me do some basic math. Let's see. <laughs> uh, I think, if I remember correctly, the max is twenty d six. Fall damage to one attack is twenty d six. Oh yeah, they're they're taken max then uh so let's let's roll for some funsies shall we <laughs> uh the first one will take uh 66 points of owie fall damage uh and in addition it just kind of like crumbles uh as it hits the ground because even though it did not do enough damage to kill it a fall from such a height against a construct uh is no good uh, the second one will take 72 points oh of of owie damage. Clank, clank, clank. Uh, the third one is petrified. Uh, let's see. Doesn't that mean it takes double bludgeoning damage? Yeah. Nice. Nice. That one is super dead. That is 130. Just a bunch damage. of. I think we're getting up there to uh, highest damage dealt in, in these campaigns. Uh, in 72. 
uh, and you you all hear the crashes and the uh, Omni. You feel mis miraculously your hunter's mark has returned to you. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe we clear the combat encounter by making all the <laughs> robots fall to the to the ground. Yeah, that was kind of what I was hoping for. I I hoped y'all would uh get creative with that. And G G caught on to the wind up real fast. Yeah, mm. Omni's not smart at all. Any attempt at that would probably end in failure. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, so as uh, you all hear the crashing sounds, um, Trinket will uh, kind of point outwards uh, and say, uh, there's probably more of them going around. We probably can't get too deep into Hither. Mm -hmm. uh, we could try, but I don't might be risky. Is there any any place in particular you guys are looking for me to get close to? Airdrop yeah. right on her rooftop. <laughs> uh, well, get as close as we can without it being dangerous. I would say. Is there a leak like nearby? A big one. Uh, yeah, uh, let's, uh, here, tell you what, I will, uh, I'm gonna show y'all the map. And I will, I'm gonna put on Fog of War, and mm -hmm. I will kind of show you uh, the areas that you can uh, kind of see. That will move y'all over there real quick. Uh, as you kind of cross over the mountains of thick fog and clouds, uh, what you're able to kind of see in your range currently in your balloon is uh, right next to you there appears to be uh, a forested area uh, kind of lined with some mountains and what appears to be a uh, larger cave formation uh, and you also see a little bit further out from that like it would take some additional traveling time you kind of see um, a clearing in the dense forests uh, that kind of have a uh, you can't see from this distance but there's definitely like a space where you might be able to land there um, Trinket will tell you that probably the kind of landing near those caves right on the edge of Tither is probably the safest bet uh, to go to the clearing uh, might risk uh, some further disturbances or detections by Scabatha. I overheard the robot there. You are not the runaway they are looking for. They're looking for three children. And it was saying that they would reconverge in those caves. So if the runaways are caught, that's where they will end up before they head back. Well, if the runaways are being sent to the cave, there may be more put in there, in like cages or something, we could uh, take them out of, perhaps? Yeah, if there's a chance that there's, a, there's more kids in there, then we need to check that out. I need to get as many out as I can. 
Uh, there's a chance that we can stop them from being able to use that place. If those kids get captured or you find them and bring them there and we can rescue them before they put them in there, I think I think that's a good opportunity for us. The names were Jacques, Jill. And I missed the last one. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Jack, Jill, and Elizabeth. Those names. I know you have a hard time remembering, but do they ring? Do they? Uh, roll me one of your memory d uh, d20s. I don't think it does. Uh, unfortunately, the names uh, don't ring any bells to you at this time. No, they don't. They don't ring in... I take the mushroom out of my pocket. And give it a ring. Ooh. Uh, go Do ahead. Ring any bells now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll me a d20 plus your level. We're level 6 now. Hey. Mm hmm. Oh, no. oh. Um, as you uh, use a chime of the mushroom, um, it kind of centers to your core. Um, no direct memories uh, are recalled, though for some reason, one of those names, you don't know which one, it, you're, you're kind of blanking at the moment, one of them kind of elicits a memory of long curled brown hair. No face, no no much of anything, just long curly brown hair. I don't really remember who they are. That that's the only thing I can. The hair. That kind of sensation. Hmm. Well, then, at, <clears throat> at least we know what to look for now. Uh, long, curly brown hair. Yeah. At, at the very least, that's. One thing I remember. You guys want to go and check that cave out? How was we dropped over there? Yeah, sounds like a plan. <clears throat> yes, sounds like a plan. Plan. It is the most direct route, and we'll be encountering those things either way. This way, they might be a bit more scattered out as they come in. True. Put a trap. All right. Um, Trinket will uh, begin the process of getting you closer down to the ground, um, closer towards this cave formation. Um, and as we get closer, would everyone make me uh, perception checks? <laughs> uh, oh, it's probably been longer than a minute, so never mind. Oh yes, uh, Bless has uh, definitely faded at this point. And it's also saving to those, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> Uh, as you get uh, with a 19 Omni uh, as you kind of look through your scope 
um, you kind of see a rather upsetting picture as you're landing. Um, you are you are not in this space just yet. You are still descending from the ship um, a pretty far enough way that they will not notice you. Uh, but I will show you uh, kind of a a new map. Uh, you, you're able to spot on the, um, what is undoubtedly the cave that, uh, G must have overheard about. Uh, and you notice, uh, things look very tense at the moment. Uh, most notably, as from far away, you're able to, uh, make out, uh, these, uh, strange mechanized creatures and they all seem to be holding uh these toy-like contraptions that look like a mix between a baton and a candy cane as well as this um strange looking uh needle-like object in their other hand and they seem to like kind of be advancing on this scene uh, you see also two of those flying toy demons that you had just encountered. They seem to be hovering slightly over the entrance of this cave, where you also notice uh, two very large centaurs are uh, knocked prone and are currently covered in nets. And they, they seem to be uh, advancing slowly towards another centaur that is... Uh, not netted and seems to be uh, kind of holding the line, as it were, against a very injured-looking dryad, uh, a uh, a tree person who seems to have like many bits and pieces uh, carved off of their body. And in the corner, um, you also see. Uh, an individual who uh, is currently uh, grappled by uh, uh, a toy net and is being watched over by uh, more of those soldiers. And it is at this point uh, that you uh, you're about halfway done descending, uh, and you kind of have a few options before you, uh, Omni. You know that you could very easily uh, land the ship. Uh, and take a stealthy approach or you might be able to get the ship landing more guns blazing and get you there quicker uh, but i will leave that discussion or other alternative plans you may have uh to discuss with your party as i'll take you back to the ship oh and my wings are gone as well Okay. But statistically, everyone would have that 12 bonus hit points from Twilight Sanctuary as well. Just. Right. <laughs> There's. And Omni saying this through the. Uh, as he's uh, scanning through the scope of his uh, bow. Uh, there's a whole bunch of mechanical soldier like things uh, and a couple more or two more of those demons that we encountered just now uh, outside of that cave entrance they seem to have uh, I think it's, it's two centaurs captured there's 
some sort of tree person. Uh, it's also being. It looks very wounded. And. Long, curly brown hair. We need. I need to get down there. Yes. Corvus. <coughs> Corvus and. About twelve of them. You guys want to do this? You guys want to do this quiet? Or um. It looks like everyone's everyone's down there is pretty rough, right? It does. Okay. If the droid is carved up, there might not be anything left of it if they're capturing the others but hurting that one. Hi. I... As much as I would like to go in stealthily and safely, I think it's to be best if we go for a surprise and just, well, guns blazing, I guess. What do you think, G? I'm down for that. Yeah, I don't think that. At the very least, I don't think that Dryad has time if we don't get in there. Marzion, are you up for uh, jumping feet first into hell? Absolutely. We must protect those that cannot protect themselves. Amen. Wait, wait what does that mean? I'm not sure. I think I heard there's a, a strange group of clerics. I think they're a roaming band. They all have different specialties. That was a Joe Cat reference. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I think Amen is just one person, because it's a men, I guess. <laughs> True. Look, I mean, I think, I think we need to go down there. Yeah. All right, uh, Trinket will uh, kind of put the balloon into high gear uh, and will begin the process of uh, basically dive bombing a little too hard. It seems he's a little bit reckless. Uh, and all of you uh, kind of have this split second where you're able to, you're close enough to the ground where you wouldn't take falling damage as you all begin to leap off. Um, go ahead and make me uh, acrobatics or athletics checks to see how well you stick the landing. And that will determine uh, the amount of surprise. Uh, acrobatics or athletics? Mm-hmm. Sorry, Amelphia doesn't have it, but that's Amelphia. And then... Yeah, they're both a plus three. I'll give myself guidance to this. Oh! No need. No need for guidance. And then what is it? Acrobatics or athletics? Either way, it's a plus mm -hmm. zero. <laughs> What's a 12 today? Uh, on average, uh, especially with G's uh, above, well above a, well above the DC, uh, Almathea uh, is above the DC. Omni, the average uh, 
the average across the board is enough. Uh, let me go ahead and gather up your tokens. Uh, and Trinket will be flying away, and we'll meet up with you all at a later time. Let's head two Netro 20s there. <laughs> Oof. I know it's a 19. Uh, you can all place yourself anywhere uh, south of this line. Also, um, question, or, with the Basilisk's Petrifying Gaze, is that single target now, or any creature within 30 feet? Uh, you need to command it to look at a single target for right now. Okay. In the future, when it is self-sufficient and doesn't require orders, uh, then we'll be able to get crazy with it. <laughs> cool. And I will go ahead and uh, change the music again. And I swapped over to my gun. And the... Okay, sounds good. As we dropped in. Yeah, Basilisk is... Well, I'm hoping that the Basilisk will be a few tiles to the right of G. Because I can't control that. Yet. Oh, yeah. Let me get that. Uh, whoop. Uh, da -da -da -da. All right. Uh, so go ahead and click on your tokens uh, and you can roll for initiative again. And then we will get some. Uh, we'll have the uh, description and the introduction uh, soon after. Dora is going to be... Man, if I knew there would be two combats today, I would have changed my spells up a bit. Yeah. Oh, this round of initiative is almost the complete opposite of the oh, last round of initiative. And then, oh, it's got advantage, so I'll do that second one. A, 19. Cool. 19. All right. Uh, so as you all drop in, um, kind of what you see immediately, um, right before you drop in, you kind of overhear uh, kind of like the clanking of these uh, toy soldiers, uh, these small automatons uh, begin uh, advancing towards. Uh, the curly-haired individual with brown hair uh, is currently bound, cannot speak. Um, those toy soldiers don't seem too uh, concerned with her, as far as they can tell. Like she's captured, they're not doing anything additional with her. Uh, the two centaurs that are bound in front of the cave um, are very beaten up uh, and are struggling a bit. Uh, they are not in risk of dying, uh, but they are heavily damaged. Uh, the last centaur is like holding his body out uh, to provide a shield for this. Poor Dryad that looks just beaten up, like almost as if someone has taken like a wood chisel uh, to them and uh, taken bits from them. Right. Um, uh, but as you, is there enough? Was there enough time between the last combat and or last encounter and this one for a short rest? Uh, yes, so you flew for quite a bit. So if any of you would like to uh, do anything for a short rest, or if you get any skills or things back, uh, yes. Uh, you probably traveled for about an hour after the encounter. Where is it? 
and before the short rest Aurora would have used the Harness Divine Power to regenerate a personal spell slot. Okay. Wait, no. No, she wouldn't have, because I've read it wrong. I thought it was a channel divinity that used that. Wait, no. Wait, what? Just a second, I'm... What? I don't get it. It's a good oh, never mind. Never mind. It's like, okay. You can. I can use the harness divine power twice per long rest, but it uses a channel divinity charge, which recharges on a short rest. Okay. Gotcha. I wouldn't have used that then. So just short rested. I am confusion. Hey, combat start. Let's go. Okay. Sounds good. Let me get my music running. Uh, as you uh, all lead in uh, to action, uh, they are all taken aback by your sudden presence. Uh, and you may make, for this very first round of combat, uh, any of your attack rolls have advantage. Uh, quickly, are they? Can I use a martial check to see if they are um, undead? The toy soldiers. Uh, I'd say there's enough time. Whenever you were getting in close, uh, as well as Omni seeing them from so far away, uh, yeah, you can get a martial check real quick. Cool. Uh, martial check is just a wisdom check. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh, just wisdom. E. Oh, 23 and 24. Never mind. Yep, uh, that is enough to... Ooh, nice. Uh, so that is enough to know that um, the toy soldiers are both a construct and a fae. Again. <sighs> they have... So close. So close to something really cool. Oh well. I'll put I'll put some undead in later. I promise. <laughs> All right. Uh, so at the top of the round, uh, G, you are up. Okay. Um. Okay. Up first, shotgun blast to encompass. Um. Damn it these two individuals so aim the shotgun off this direction here okay sounds good and you said it's advantage on both mm -hmm. yep it's advantage for this first round uh so the 13 will hit for the first one and a 20 will hit for the second one. Uh, the first one takes uh, 13 points of piercing damage, and the second one will take 15 points of piercing damage. Yeah, after seeing that first hit, uh, I'll do a martial check. Okay. Uh, toy soldier. Oh, yes, toy soldier. Okay, gotcha. Uh, uh where's there she? Come on. Is it already open? Oh, yes, it's already open. There it is. Uh, it has the. Oh, I didn't make a list. That's okay. Okay. 
I don't know what Capu Tray is, but it sounds like a fun time. It's French. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Capture. Um. Any, any, mine, and bow. Um. Superior construct. All right. Oh, I've got it. Stupid thing, whispering. Never whisper rolls. Thank you. Uh, within the toy soldier is an advanced mechanism that ensures it never runs out of energy. Its core can be removed or recovered. And then a uh, second blast. Second attack. Click, click. All right. Uh, 22 will hit for 15 points of piercing damage for the first shot. Or the first enemy. Or the first enemy, yep. Oh, natural 20 for 14 and 7. Uh, as you come in guns blazing and you fire off these two shots, um, both creatures, you watch as their uh, metallic coverings kind of come off and you see like more of these gears and uh, beneath all this hard metal is actually very fragile wood. Uh, okay. Put away my gun, take out my sword and buckler, and move in on the first one. All right. I didn't roll initially for the basilisk. Oh, we didn't. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Where's your initiative? There it is. All right. Uh, anything else for this turn? Um, that is all for now. All right, uh, Aurora. Aurora is going to uh, just be looking at what the, the basilisk does the thing. Well, probably need to poison. Um, you're going to use her action to ask as a basilisk. Uh, can you please uh, chomp on the uh, toy soldier that is closest to the standing centaur, please? And yeah, so if she wants the basilisk to take the fight action against either this toy soldier or this one, whichever is closer. All right, uh, go ahead and make me an animal handling check with uh, advantage. Yep. The Basilisk nods, and on its turn, it will take that action. Already aimed. Is... Uh, 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 uh. Then Aurora is going to uh, hold a locket that is around her neck and uh, cast uh, the Helmbrustel Ekitsune Spirit and then doink. Uh, let me take up a second on the spot and then I'll just display that on VTT. It's a big one. And she will cast okay. that on Armin. So I'll just 
do the if you're willing of course let's just pop that down in here what it does yeah sure yeah so yeah that's on you just for now and I'm concentrating I'm just gonna yes about to stay where I am and that's the turn uh, right. oh yeah uh, Marshall check on the toy soldiers are they immune are they weak as resistance immunities because I want to know if I can poison them okay uh, go ahead and roll a uh, marshal check. Yeah. Uh, 13 is sufficient. Uh, hold on, let me sort through the toy demon, toy soldier. Um, they are immune to poison damage, but not the poison condition. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, actually, you get, you get all of these. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, they are vulnerable to thunder and lightning damage. Uh, they are immune to poison and necrotic. Yeah. Cool. Thunder All right. Back. If I knew, if I, I told myself a martial check before I command a basilisk to know what it does. Now it's going to do like half chomp damage. Oh well. Learning for next time. All right, uh, Omni, you're up. Uh, should check. On toy soldiers. All right. Uh, so they have have do 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 do. do. Uh, you still have not learned projectile, poison, needle, capture, HP, or AC. Projectile. Poison needle capture. Well, we've already seen with similar capture, so I think that's pretty much the same. Let's see, projectile poison needle. Okay. Uh, it is an attack that has a plus seven to hit. It deals one d six plus three piercing and one d six poison. Okay. All right. Uh, as a bonus action, I'm gonna hunter smark this toy soldier here. Oh wait, right. no, wouldn't be available yeah. anymore because we had time for a long rest. Short rest. Oh yeah, you. Yeah, we've had a yeah, we've short. had a short rest. <laughs> short rest. Sorry. <clears throat> so then, that would be. Let's do a let's do a forget me not instead. That's a bonus action. All right, you gain the benefits of forget me not. And I'm going to fire off uh, at the same toy soldier. I'm going to fire off uh, two shots, a uh, sharpshooter with advantage, right? Yep, first round is at advantage. Okay. It's going to be a 14 to hit with the sharp uh, uh, negative. That will hit for a 14. Okay. So it's going to be the piercing plus 10. That's 21 piercing plus the damage from forget me not. 1d10. 8 psychic damage. All right, you fire and you just uh, really clip into this thing and you uh, kind of leave its shoulder uh, completely blown off at this point. And then I'm going to take my second shot at it. It's a 21. The, the 21 will hit. Okay, so that's another 10, 20... And then forget 
not. It's really not all of them again. Uh, unhit with a ranged weapon attack. Yep. Mm -hmm. All of them. That's 30. 30 points of damage. Dang. You shoot uh, at it for the second time and you kind of cave in its other shoulder and it is just kind of like barely keeping its mechanical bits together to uh, really... It, it's still kind of holding its arms up just barely, but all of the toll soldiers uh, are now like peering and uh, assessing the current threat. Uh, and they all are glaring at you. <laughs> They're all glaring at me. Move. A little bit more towards this angle. I'm still to move thirty. Yeah, I'm still to thirty. All right. That's where I'm gonna stay. All right. Uh, it is the toy demon's turn. Uh, this one is going to fly five, ten. right about here, uh, and it's going to shoot at uh, Mercian. Uh, but a 12 will miss. Uh, this other one is going to uh, fly forward. Uh, and it is going to fire at G. Uh, where? Too many, too many sheets open. Uh, but a 16 will miss as both of their toy trains are carried by uh, G and Mercy in both. Now it's the toy soldier's turn. Uh, these three will kind of take a firing formation. These two will advance a bit further. Uh, and, and this one is going to also kind of take a firing formation. All right. The three on the right are all going to shoot at Omni. So first attack. A 15 will miss. Uh, second attack. A 9 will miss. And third attack. Uh, 26 will hit for 4 points of piercing and 5 points of poison. Uh, and go ahead and roll me a concentration check for uh, Forget Me Not. You're good. Uh, the next two are going to uh, line up and fire at uh, Aurora. Do, 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 do. First attack. A 14 will miss. Ooh. Second attack. A 13 will miss as their needles just kind of whiz by you. Uh, the and the third batch. Or to Then uh, the last couple will, uh, two will attack at normal at G, and the last one will attack at disadvantage. Uh, first attack, 26 will hit for four points of piercing and four points of poison. Second regular attack, uh, a 17 will miss, and then the last attack will be at disadvantage. Uh, 21 will hit, but we negate the crit. Uh, so that is 8 points of piercing and 5 points of poison. God bless temporary hit points. I know, right? Alright, uh, and they all kind of are beginning to, uh, whirl and you kind of hear all of them scrambling about. Eliminate the threat. Collect the runaways. Collect the runaways. Return to mommy. Yeah, Lou. That is their turn. Uh, Mercyon will 10, 15, 20. Uh, come up and uh, attack the uh, toy soldiers to the north 
her with her quarter staff. Uh, a 20 will hit for uh, six points of bludgeoning damage. Her, her attack's not at advantage. Oh, it is an advantage. You are correct. So she does do the crit, and it does an extra five points of bludgeoning. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then she will use um, Divine Radiance, uh, her melee version of it, and smack the same one to the north of her. Uh, this is an advantage. Uh, 17 will hit for 13 points of radiant damage. And that is her turn. Uh, the Basilisk will obey its commands. 5, 10, get up right here next to G. And he's a gonna chomp. Uh, da, 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 bite. But he has advantage. Oh, no, no way. Oh, no. oh sweetheart. Basilisk, no. Oh. Uh, he, he's a little too eager to impress his new friends and uh, just isn't quite up to it as he just chomps down and the, the toy soldier is just a little too quick uh, to get out of the way. Uh, the centaur, the dryad, will see uh, this going on. Uh, the dryad will back up and the centaur will uh, kind of back up to protect her as well, uh, giving a little bit more space. Uh, at the top of the round, uh, the surprise is uh, finished, so no more advantage on attack rolls unless you get them naturally. Um, gee, you are up. Just checking something. Okay. Well, since they all moved in like that, uh, make a quick switch over from my sword and shield over to my shotgun again. And then blast all three of them all at once since they're all clumped up like that. Click, click. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, oh so my shit. lord! Uh, so that first one takes 14 and 9. Uh, the second one takes 11. Uh, and the last one will take 22 points. Uh, and all of them just within range. Uh, this crazy... Oh. Is that one in range? It is in yep. range. <laughs> click, another click. net 20. Get another net. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one will hit, though, for uh, 15 points of piercing damage. Uh, and they are all significantly um, metal scraped and scattered and more of that exposed wood uh, deep within. Well, that's the first shot. <laughs> All right, uh, so that'll be 15 points of damage for the first one, 12 points of damage for the second one, 18, oh. Boop. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 14 points of damage for the last one. Uh, they are significantly messed up, uh, and one of them kind of collapses. Uh, leaving thrown behind a whole bunch of parts and pieces. Oh. Uh, Ganner of the Wreckage and Marshall Chick. Uh, you're you're a little bit high off of those the, the <laughs> massive damage. You you can't quite uh you can't quite see them over the carnage. And then I will 
take a step over here. Okay. All right. Uh, Aurora, it is your turn. Okay, Aurora is going to uh, not cast a concentration spell, which there's a lot of. Um, uh, yeah, Aurora is going to uh, actually. One moment, please, while I look at the Amalfi stats. Yeah, so Aurora is going to uh, charge at the... Okay, so question. Um, if Aurora ha charges and has Amalfi use the hoof attack, would that take Aurora Aurora's action? Bonus action or neither, because it's the um, Nounx attack. Um, I would say that would be a bonus action uh, okay. to uh, command your fine steed. Alrighty, so Aurora is going to get a Malphia and charge forward 20 feet, and as a bonus action, use the hoof attack. Ooh. Uh, one on the left or the right? Uh, the one on the left. All right. Uh, it takes 10 points of bludgeoning damage as Almathia just kind of begins stomping, leaving these and, large dents in the creature. And because Amalthea moved 20 feet straight towards the creature, it must make a DC 14 strength saving throw or fall prone. All right. Strength. Oh no, it is now prone. I'll just show you what the thing does. Yep, and then because that was Aurora's bonus action, um, she's going to. Uh, yeah, use. Her action to uh, politely ask the basilisk to petrify the toy demon who is uh, nearby the centaur and dryad. All right, uh, go ahead and make me a animal handling check at advantage. All right, uh, the basilisk nods in understanding and kind of begins turning its gaze towards the toy demon. Yep. Then that is the turn. All right, uh, Omni, you're up. And, and muted. Thank you. Uh, hmm. Do we have every, uh, everything marked for check for the toy soldier? Uh, the only things you don't have are HP and AC. Uh, let's do a march check. 17. Uh, that's enough to know that they have um, 70 hit points each. 70 hit points each, okay. Now, uh, which ones were the ones who were saying return to mommy? Uh, they're all kind of echoing it in um, amongst each other. Uh, I'll say the two in the middle uh, probably were saying it the last that you heard. They were saying to take back the runaways with them. Yes. Okay, yeah, that means I got ground the toy demon first then. Do I have anything to ground them directly? I do not. Hate them directly, so I'm just gonna take uh, two hits against the toy demon here on the right, 
uh, with okay. sharpshooter. First one's gonna be a total miss. And, uh, and over, second. Uh, like, uh, that's twelve. Oh no, still wouldn't hit. Do we know the toy demon's armor class? Uh, not yet. No. Okay. Never mind then. Okay. Um, and second attack. That's a twelve to hit at this moment. Uh, that doesn't hit at the moment, um, but you can use um, a Aurora, your uh, spirit, yeah. I believe. Yeah, Aurora's going to use her Kitsune spirit thing to get that to attempt to hit. So you okay. roll with a d4. Um, roll with a d4, okay. Nah, it's a 1. <sighs> that will miss. Oh well. Well... I'm going to use another charge of War Priest to take a bonus action attack against them. A sharpshooter. <laughs> okay. It's going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, that will just hit. Okay. Alright, so... It's going to be 11, 21 piercing, and... How to get the note... Uh, three psychic. All right. Uh, the first two kind of dink off, but that third one hits home uh, and kind of leaves a nasty uh, gash in this uh, creature's uh, metallic coating. Okay. And I'm gonna start moving closer. Over here a little bit. Uh, over here. Mm, that's going to be my turn. All right. Uh, the toy demon on the left, uh, as it has been gazed upon by the basilic, is going to. Uh, on the left, is going to make a Constitution saving throw. A 14, and I believe it's the DC 12. is 12. Yes, 12. So it will succeed on this one. Okay, uh, this toy demon is going to kind of fly forward uh, and is going to shoot at Omni. Boy attack. A 14 will miss. Uh, the other one uh, is going to move forward. Uh, seeing the carnage and devastation left behind by G and is going to fire at G. Oh no. <laughs> that is a natural one. Uh, the toy kind of gets jammed in the cannon on his right hand and he has to like take a moment to like un it just finally just yanks it out in rage and just throws it on the ground. That is their turn. Uh, the toy soldiers will go now. Uh, they are going to... Uh, this one's going to move up, and uh, uh, it is going to be flanking with Mercian, and it is going to use the melee version of its uh, poison needle on her. Uh, first attacks are made at advantage for the first... So, advantage. Uh, 21 will hit for uh, 6 points of damage. Uh, second attack against her. Uh, the 17 will miss. Uh, and this third attack is just a regular one. 21 will hit for a total of 9 points of damage against her. Uh, the one that is prone is going to use half of its movement to stand up. Uh, the one that got hooved is going to actually attack Almathea. Uh, so mm -hmm. this will be a melee attack. Uh, just a second, if I remember correctly. The death on Steve was that. Um, 
which attack roll is it the 11 uh yes it is the 11 okay aurora is going to use the uh i believe is is it fine steed that does it or is it um mounted combat uh No, that is Mountain Combatant that has that feature. Never mind, yeah, it'll hit Analthea. Alright, uh, she will take 7 points of damage total. Um, the other one is going to uh, use a uh, melee attack against Almathea as well. Uh, 26 will hit for a total oh. of 13 points of damage. Oh, that's just her hit points. Wait, did she have the... Uh, um, she, she had, she had the, the 10, hit 10 hit points from... Okay. okay. Yep, so Ooh. she's at 8 hit points right now. Alright. Uh, and the last two are going to kind of look at G nervously here. Uh, this one's going to move right here uh, to get in a flanking position. Uh, and they're both going to use the melee version of their poison needle. Uh, burst attack. Uh, 21 will hit for 9 points of damage total. The second one. Uh, 18. Uh, that will be 15 points of damage total. Yep, that matches me. See, see, so, yep. Because you had uh, unequipped the. Yep. Uh, shield, correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need to need to drop that down by two. All right. Uh, that is the toy soldier's turn. Uh, Mercyon will come up. Uh, she's going to bash the one on the left with her quarter staff. Uh, the nineteen will hit for seven points of bludgeoning damage, and then she will follow up with a divine radiance at melee. Uh, the natural one, unfortunately, will miss. Uh, the Basilisk uh, Teich uh, used its gaze against the Toy Demon for this round. Uh, the Centaur and the Dryad both take the dodge action. G, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, pull up my shield and rapier again. then take a stab at the one between me and the basilisk all right you are flanking so you have advantage uh the 21 will hit for six points of piercing damage second strike and the 21 will hit for 9 points of piercing, uh, leaving it just very battered and beaten, but it is still kind of like clinging to life. Action Surge. Stab again. Uh, you know the thing I said about it clinging to life? Uh, no. <laughs> it's... Uh, you stab and just kind of like go through its body and it ceases functioning as it kind of crumples to the ground. Stab it, lift it around, whip around with it on the end and go for a strike against the one on the opposite side there. All right. Uh, the 14 will hit um, as it is hit with the body of its friend. Uh, it takes six points of uh, piercing damage from your weapon. And Marshall Chick. All right, uh, that is sufficient. Um, I think the only thing you lack on the toy so are are you marshaling the toy soldier? Yeah, toy soldiers. All right. Um, the only thing remaining on them is their AC, uh, which is uh, 13. 
Okay. Oh, uh, bonus action, uh, second wind. Okie dokie. Uh, so you will heal for 12 HP. And that is all for now. All right, Aurora, you're up. Uh, okay, so Aurora is going to... So we know about, like, the energy core thing going on with the toy soldiers, right? Correct. So, would they be easily accessible and or hoof stompable? Or... Uh, yes. If they are, uh, I've kind of been mentioning, like, as they take damage more and more of their metal carapace falls away. Right. Um, creatures that are damaged uh, have a chance at crushing core okay then uh, uh oh, which one should i do um all right so aurora is going to get the yeah, amalthia to again make a hoof attack um uh, wait, what's her speed? 60? Um, Alright, four. Uh, yes, if I use 60. the disengage action, can I run back 20, run for 20, stomp, and then run back the last 20 without getting opportunity attacks both times? Or is the disengage action uh, only the first move? Let me go look at that real quick. That's a good question. Disengage 5e. Uh, da, da, da. If, you if you take the disengage action, your movement does not prov provoke opportunity attacks for the rest of the turn. Okay then. So to start, this feels incredibly cheesy, but um, Aurora is going to take the disengage action, uh, go back 5, 10, 15, 20, now she's 20 feet away, make another charge, another 20, and the hoof attack for a bonus action against a previously damaged toy soldier, hoping to aim for mm -hmm. the chest thing. Ooh, that would probably miss. Uh, that will miss. And going to uh, run back another 5, 10, 15, 20. And that's her turn. Okay. All right, Omni, you're up. Uh, okay. <laughs> Mercy on's completely surrounded, so I'm gonna try and help her out just a little bit. Um, let's try and take one, one regular shot at this toy soldier here. Okay. That will hit. And it uh, immediately crumples from the uh, swift firing of your arrow. And then uh, this one, with sharpshooter. It's a 17 to hit. That will hit. Okay, so that's 15 plus the 10 from forget-me-not. That's uh, 24 points of damage. And then, just to try and clear her off from as many as possible, I'll take the last uh, charge of War Priest and take another attack with Sharpshooter. Okay. I'll, I'll do this one regular. Eight. 
18. 18 will hit. That's 10 piercing damage. And where is. Where did I put it? Or did we not? Five psychic damage. I should have done sharpshot. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, your second arrow's uh, shot, or your shot from. Uh, war priest goes through uh, and this other creature is just littered with holes in it now and it is sparking and uh, just a little bit of fire from the wood and they'll do a martyr check on toy demon nope flying thing no. I've forgotten entirely about it you're, you just have this mental block against these toy demons. It's just, it's not going well for you today on them. <laughs> and now that, that one's, now that this one's gone. There we go. I'll move over on this side. That's my turn. All right. Uh, the toy demon will uh, kind of look at its prospects. Uh, it will uh, kind of see things are going a bit south. Uh, and it is going to uh, follow its primary directive. Uh, it is going to rush up here. Uh, and it is going to use its abduct ability uh, against this restrained individual. Uh, it is now holding it or holding her, and uh, it is five feet off the ground, and it looks like it is about to take off. And when she wakes up, she'll be in Volcano Manor. <laughs> I got that reference. <laughs> I'm not sure. If got that reference. Is that's Elden Ring, right? Yes, Elden Ring. Okay. Uh, no one could think it. Uh and then the other one uh is going to uh click click and uh you know what that basilisk tried to petrify him. He's going to shoot at that one. No he's not. Uh the toy uh the toy train shoots out of the cannon and just shatters against the side of the basilisk and the basilisk just kind of looks at it and did you really try to do that uh toy soldiers turn uh let's see they are still scared of the scary lady so that one is going to move up they are both going to attack mercian uh first bit uh the 21 will hit for 10 points of damage. The second one will hit for 9, 10, 11, 12 points of damage, leaving her with a single hit point remaining. Uh, she definitely looks a bit worse for wear uh, as she's got all of these uh, jabbed needle holes in her and you kind of see the poison uh, taking its effect. Uh, the next two are not gonna get anywhere near G. They've seen what they've seen what he can do. Yeah. 10, 15, 20, 25, 10, 15, 20. Uh so this first one is going to attack Omni. Uh 25 will hit Omni for nine points of damage. Uh and the second one is going to attack Mercian. Uh, and as the fired needle hits Mercian, uh, she will go down. And she is unconscious. Uh, Mercian will... Oh, wait, no, I got this one last brave soul over here by G. Uh, he's going to try a poison needle attack. But a 16 will miss. Now Mercian will make a death saving throw. 
and will get one success. Uh, the Basilisk received no commands. Uh, it takes the dodge action. Centaur and Dryad also take the dodge action. Uh, G, it is your turn. Oh. I can't. Growl at the toy soldier. I don't have time for you. Stab. Stab. Okay, that will be uh, minus six and minus eight as both of them uh, carve through this creature, uh, leaving it with very little energy remaining. Um, and then just move up a little bit and then um marshall check the demons okay all right uh, i think the only thing you're missing from the toy demons are their hp and ac okay. um ac yeah okay uh, they have an AC of 15. Okay. And that's all for now. Aurora, you're up. So Aurora is going to... Yeah, uh, get within... Uh, where's the measure and tape but uh, yeah she's going to get but oh, wrong button going to get within 30 or so feet of harmony and transfer the kitsune spirit to amalthia okay actually one second uh this will even spell descriptions and stuff uh, okay, uh, it's actually going to move it onto Aurora herself instead. Because any spell that Aurora casts that affects only her also affects Amalthea. So I'll get that bonus. And as a and yeah, as her action, she is going to cast. Yeah, cast command on the toy demon that has picked up the. or has abducted the person. And she's going to say. Uh, release. So release on, on it. Okay. And so it does. It, uh, it releases the individual uh, and also, as part of release, um, will take the netting that was binding her previously. Uh, I'll back him up just a little bit as well. Uh, so she is now freed. And I'll add her to the bottom of the initiative. Yeah, so that'll happen on its turn, but yeah, that's what's... Mm -hmm. Then, uh... I'll, um... Is Mercy on downed, or... Just... Uh, she is... She is downed, um, she has one successful death saving throw. Okay, uh... Yep. And let's see what to do. Just gets my spirit. Uh, yeah, and 
Would Kitsune's spirit affect Amal's here? Because the mount's turn usually happens immediately after mine. Or uh, uh, yes, uh, your Althea's goes right after yours, so she would get the benefit of the Kitsune woo, spirit because of your fine steed. Woo, woo, woo. Oh. Hey, that's better than no hit points, arguably. Yep. And that's Aurora's turn. All right. Omni, you're up. Omni will see uh, the toy demons start to pick up the person up and her getting released and out of the net now toy soldier approaching him from behind and sees Mercian going down and remembers what humility told him what happens if you go down trying to save these kids and will extend his hand out in Mercian's direction and cast healing word I'll do it at first level for this time. Okay. She gets 6 HP. Okay. She is conscious again. And... We'll try to... Uh, we'll take a shot. No, that I would be at disadvantage from being next to Toy Soldier, wouldn't I? Yes, ranged attacks would be at disadvantage right now. Well, my short swords. Oh, oh no, the Ranger is effective at short range. <laughs> A short sword, because Aurora has one of my mine. <laughs> and okay, I'll take the opportunity attack. All right. Uh. Boop, uh, a 10 will miss. Aurora's got one of the short swords. I thought she gave it back. Oh well. Oh. I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, Very well. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take an attack with a short sword. Uh, 17 will hit. Takes four points of piercing. And well, I'll have to take the other attack with the short sword against the same thing then. Okay. That'll miss. Eleven will miss. Uh let's try another martial check at the toy demons. Wow, there really is something there. There, there's a trauma there. You're there's slowly shoveling there. it. You're slowly shoveling that out. Uh. Yeah, that's it. That's all I can do for now. Okay. Uh, the toy demon on the right uh, takes the action to release the creature, uh, so it cannot do anything else. Uh, the one on the left. Uh, He's also seeing things are not going too great, uh, so he is going to actually kind of move over here, uh, trying to use its uh, main command functioning that it was, or the main order it was given, uh, and it's going to start attacking this centaur uh, to get to the dryad, and this centaur just kind of bulks itself up and like holds itself as it's been taking the dodge action. Uh, it's going to make the melee version of its toy attack, and you see it pull out this um, uh, very large foam-looking bat uh, that has spikes on the edge of it. Bonk. Uh, but at disadvantage. Uh, I believe uh, the 21 will hit, and the centaur will take uh, 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Uh, it still appears to be holding, but uh, it cannot take too many more hits like that. 
the toy soldiers, uh, I'm just going to give them a general, because Mercyon is up, but she is prone. I'm going to see if they're smart enough to realize she is back up. They are not. So that is that is a that is a dead thing. They will deal with that later. Uh, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. As it steps over the corpse of its previous uh, assistants, and they go after Omni. First attack at advantage. Uh, the 27 will be a natural 20. Uh, so minus 8, minus 6, minus 4, minus 5. On Earth, do you see resistant to poison? Or is that something mm, no. someone else? No, that's for halfling. So I think that's right. what you're thinking of. Alright, uh, second attack's at advantage. The 26 will hit for uh, 13 points of damage. No, not 13. I can't do math. Uh, seven, 11 points of damage. Uh, third attack got advantage. The 24 will hit. Uh, that will be 10 points of damage, and uh, you are now unconscious. Uh, and the last one, seeing you go down, uh, will yeah, yeah, and will shoot uh, at Aurora with the ranged version. Yeah. Uh, 23 will hit for 9 points of damage total. Yeah. Alright, uh, that is... The toy soul. Oh wait, nope. We got the one straggler over there with G. Uh, oop. Poke. Oh. I'm rolling. I'm rolling hot this last half. Uh, that will be a critical hit for uh, thirteen and twelve. Uh, Mercy in will stand up using half of her movement. Uh, boop. Let's see, she's got... Oh yeah, she's definitely got it. Uh, for her action, uh, she is going to cast uh, Cure Wounds on Omni. Uh, she is going to upcast this uh, to fourth level. Oh shit. Oh shit. For six... Wait, no. Oh no. That's 16 hit points. The the 10 is the higher level cast, and then the 6 is... I, I was like, there's no way it's 6. Uh, yeah. Omni, you recover 16 hit points. Uh, I don't believe that's all she can do. Let me mark off her spell shot. Okay. Uh, yep, that is her turn. Uh, the Basilisk takes the dodge action. Centaur and Dryad take dodge action. And the mysterious uh, uh, brown curly-haired girl who's been watching all of this go down uh, like grabs the what has been like keeping her silent and she'll kind of look in disbelief towards um, the lot of you and she'll look towards Omni who is now conscious again it's like Calumon? Calumon, you you look so young! And she will start uh, rushing forward, uh, and she's going to try and beat this toy soldier's ass uh, with an unarmed strike. Uh, unfortunately, all she can do is just kind of, like, punch it, and she's like, ow! And she just, like, grabs up her fist. Uh, gee, it is your turn. Uh, 
Can anyone hear me? Yes, uh, we can. I can. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, G, can you hear us? Bugger. There. Hi. Oh, okay. yes. Gotcha. Stab okay. with rapier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Stab. Oh, yes, you definitely stab with rapier, and uh, he did. And whip round, toss the body at the demon, and then rush the demon. All right. And then uh, make a stab at it. Do I hear a fourth crit? I do see a fourth <laughs> crit. Oh my what? god. <laughs> So it's that's where time. all my luck this week went. <laughs> uh, you stab into it, uh, and it kind of wheels around, having had its attention on the centaur, and it is now uh, kind of focused on you now. Just one more step that way. And then uh, march to check. Okay, uh, that is enough to reveal the Boy Demon's last bit with his HP. Um, they have a max of 110, Jeez. and that one has 65 remaining. Okay. And the other right, one has 86 can, remaining. We can fly like 100 or like 200 feet in the air real quick. I've got a quick way of getting rid of them. <laughs> you use up my flying fly speed for the day. <laughs> I have a broom of flying. <laughs> Same we can't carry on. Okay. And that's all for me at the moment. All right, uh, Aurora, it is your turn. Okay. So... Right, Aurora is going to go for... God, this is decisions. Um, yeah, Aurora is going to go 5, 10, 15... The toy demon, yeah, with the 15, and she is going to um, uh, have the Mask of Alani uh, activate and uh, have and say a hilarious joke, which is um, should have taken out the joke list before I set up the mood. Um, where is it? Uh, she says, uh, what is it called when the Buent protest escalates? Uh, why it? <laughs> oh, make a, make a performance check. And... Where is it? Roddy and Formance is here. Oh, that's real bad. Chris, charisma saving throw of it oh. fail. Oh my god! It is now must spend its next action applauding your performance and cannot take any other actions. And that is one usage of three. Cool. And, uh, uh, bonus action, uh, I do not have many bonus actions, um, yeah, bonus action, I will move the Kitsune Spirit to... 
and he's in the most death danger. Um, move attack for Omni, so Omni's got it back on him again. Okay. So at the yep. start of your turn, you can recover 1d6 hit points. 1d6 hit points, okay. If I choose, which unfortunately, in this case, Aura will have to deal healing. <laughs> For those of you watching the stream, I have a challenge going on where my character Aurora never directly deals damage or heals. Um, and it is very disappointing when it does happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> All good. Yeah, and uh, that is her turn. All right, uh, Omni, at the start of your turn, uh, you can roll to recover some hit points. Roll 1d6. Okay, five. All right, you're back up to 21 hit points. Woo! It's been half my movement to get up. <laughs> oh, I forgot I had that. I forgot I had this. Oh god. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> Not like this. Oh. Don't worry, e even if anything does happen, I also have this. <laughs> I'm going to take a swing with the short sword at the the one with the least hit points. Okay. <laughs> hurry, 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 hurry. <laughs> uh, that'll hit. It dies. Yes, it dies. And as Omni makes that first strike with the sword, he'll say, "Who's Cali Man?" And the. Yeah, and the girl kind of looks at you and is like, you look, you, and she kind of like tilts her head. Uh, we'll talk after, we'll talk after, big guy. Uh, but you, oh, I'm Elizabeth, by the way. Nice to meet you. I'm, let me quickly look at my notes. I think I'm, cool. I'm going, what am I going by this time? Going to Cliff. Ooh. I'm Cliff. We'll talk after. And as Cliff is saying that, uh, he is going to take a bonus action to drag his fingers across the blunt side of the blade and is going to cast Searing Smite at second level. Ooh. Mites are back, baby! <laughs> and let's try and hit the other one down here. The one that's next to Mercy on. Okay. Oh, that's a natural one. Oh. That is a miss. Anything to reroll? No, I don't have anything to reroll. That. Okay. Yep. Yeah, nope. That's it. Yeah. Smites are back. Okay. Uh, the toy demon on the left is going to spend its turn laughing at Aurora's joke. Uh, and the toy demon on the right uh, is still going to work on its uh, initial protocol. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, and it steps into the cave. That is their turn. Uh, the toy soldiers. Let's see. Uh, they see that Mercyon and Cliff are both equally in the area. Uh, so this one 
they're going to move right there. Uh, this one's going to move out of your attack range, so if you would like, you can attempt to make an attack of opportunity. Oh, hell yes. Uh, that will miss, unfortunately. Uh, okay, uh, they're going to attack Mercyon. Uh, this one will be an advantage. Uh, the 26 will hit, uh, and Mercyon will go down. Uh, this toy soldier is going, well, is this one smart enough to realize you guys are back up? Uh, yes, he turns around hearing the commotion. Uh, this guy is going to kind of keep out of your range. He sees you're with a sword now. Uh, so this one he's going to attack uh, with a ranged projectile needle. So this will be at a regular roll. 13 will miss. Uh, and the one uh, directly to the right of you will swing with the melee one. 26 will hit and you will take 10 points of damage. Damn, I didn't okay. need to hear uh, Well, one sure. D20, death saving throw for Mercian. Oh no. No. Two fails. Basilisk, Centaur, and Dryad take the uh, dodge action. Uh, Elizabeth is going to kind of rush down and try and staunch the bleeding. Uh, an attempt to uh, stabilize. Uh, the DC will be 15. Well, mm -hmm. damn. Well, damn. Uh, Mercyon is now stable, uh, but she is still at zero hit points. Gee. Um, I'm going to... Uh, try to unplug. Oh no. <laughs> They're one great weakness. Uh, go ahead and make an acrobatics or athletics check. Alright, dexterity saving throw. Natural 20. Uh, it will, uh, kind of bash you backwards. Okay. Uh -huh. That's all I can do at the moment. All right, uh, Aurora, you're up. Okay, so uh, Aurora is uh, has the oh yeah the Tweety and has had its thing taken out. Um, yeah, he seemed like he got that G. Uh. Also concentration. Um Okay. Going to which to do, which to do. Yep, going to as an God, this will be so stupid. Uh, yeah. Just one second, if this does what I think it does. Oh, oh it already affects humanoids. Ah, bugger. That would have been so good. Um, anyway, yeah, going to cast... I really didn't want to do this. Actually, wait. Uh... 
Yep, going to activate Twilight Century because, yeah, probably should have done that like, like five turns ago, but I don't know. Yeah, pop here or so, it'll be. Yeah, everyone's within range and stuff. So, yeah, now that that's active, gonna. Let's see. Action. Then the bonus action, I'm going to move the mm, yeah, move the kids' knees. No, just not gonna do anything for a bonus action, just gonna Yeah, just chill and wait. Hope for the best. All right. Uh, Cliff, at this is it at the start or the end of the turn? Start uh, of the turn. Ends its turn. Oh. Oh what? With. Uh... Uh, whenever. Whenever a creature including you ends its turn in the sphere, you can oh. grant that creature one of the benefits. Okay. Yeah. But the kids in a sphere at the start of the turn. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so Cliff, you can go ahead and roll the d6 for Kitsune Spirit. Oh, that's two. Okay. Yep, you heal two hit points. And... Uh, okay. As a bonus action, I'm going to... Use my last first level <laughs> spell slot to uh, cast another healing word on Mercyon. Okay. Ah, uh, damn it. He heals only four. Alright, Mercyon is conscious. And then. Uh, I'm going to take. He still searing smited attack on the toy soldier in front of me. Okay. That's a 19. Yes. That will hit. So that's going to be 9 piercing damage, and it was cast at 2nd level, so 2nd level is going to be 2d6 fire damage. Two D six, okay. Nerd. That will be eight. One D six fire. Take these things. One D six, and then nine successful levels. One D six. So yeah, it's two D six. Let's make a Constitution saving throw. Uh, DC fourteen. Okay. It will fail. It will take the other six fire damage. Ooh, nice. Oh, right. Ranger gets second level slot. Good spell casting, too. Gotcha. Mm. Oh, actually, sorry. My mistake. Let me go ahead and display Steering's Might again. Okay. Um, it is at the start of each of its turns until the spell ends. The target must make a constitution. So oh. No. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. I'll add that back. So that was the first hit, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm already here. Might as well rock. Uh, just take another short sword to attack. Uh, that will hit. That will only do four piercing damage. Okay. And I will stay right where I am because I can't really risk that uh, opportunity attack. Okay. Uh, one toy demon in the cave will 
do something none of you can see. Uh, this other toy demon uh, is going to attempt to hit G uh, with its uh, melee toy attack. Oh, and Omni, you get uh, doo -doo -doo, eight temp hit points. Uh, so toy attack against G. Oh, uh, the 20 will just hit. And that will knock G unconscious. Uh, hey. That is their turn. Yeah, the, uh, toy attacks a melee attack. Uh, it has two versions. It has a ranged yeah. version that it shoots, and then it has a melee version it can hit with a bat. Okay, just to clarify. Yep, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, the toy soldiers. Uh, Preves previously discussed they do not recognize when a creature is down and recovered. Uh, so this one is, they're going to see that Omni, or Cliff, is uh, kind of dangerous at short range. Uh, so the one next to him is going to use the melee version of its uh, needle. Let's see. Uh, that will hit. Uh, the temporary hit points are gone. And you'll take five points of damage. <laughs> Glad I popped that. <laughs> uh, and the other two are going to um, fire at Aurora. Uh, just regular old. Uh, yeah, and uh, Aurora and would have had uh, 60. Would oh, have another yeah. 9, 10 hit points. Just forgot that. Okay. Uh, so the 9, 10 hit points are gone. So you'll take 8, 9, 10. One point of damage. And then the second attack at Aurora, uh, 22 will hit for eight points of damage. And I'd like that a is their constitution saving throw for the kids' <laughs> May spirit. So that is con save. Oh. Oof. Oh. That's rough, buddy. All right. Uh, Mercian will stand up. Uh, she will kind of see that things are not great at the moment. Uh, so she is going to uh, let's see each creature. Uh, she is going to use her radiant fire. Uh, Uh, so the toy soldier next to Cliff and the other one, five, ten, yep. Uh, so both of them are going to make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, the first one will fail. The second one will take half as much. Uh, roll 8d6. So this one will take 26 points of radiant damage. The other one will take 13. Uh, kind of as this radiant blast uh, just exhales all around her. Uh, and then as a bonus action, uh, she is going to use one of her regular healing potions. Uh... They take half damage on a failure, it sends. So, mm -hmm. which one failed? Or which one succeeded? Uh, the, I mean? uh, the one to the north took the full damage and is down to 23 hit points. The one to the left okay. uh, failed and took half as much. Okay, cool, because I didn't see uh, the 23, so all good. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, she will recover nine hit points. Basilisk takes the dodge action. Centaur. Uh, Actually, the centaur will see G go down uh, and will kind of take a fighting pose uh, at this point. 
uh, and he pulls out this very long pike and is going to uh, kind of stab at it from behind. Oh, it's hidden. He rolled a 21 and will deal 11 points of piercing damage. Uh, the Dryad will take the dodge action, as will Elizabeth. Uh, and we are a little over time, uh, so this will be uh, where we will call it for the evening. And we'll pick back up at the top of the round next time. Okay. On total drama <laughs> With a death save. Yeah. With a yeah. death save. Death save. Yeah, like, I didn't, I never knew how much, like, that Wither and Bloom was coming in handy for combat. But man. That Withering Bloom? Yeah, Withering Bloom from um, Oz in a previous combat. Didn't realize how much oh, it helped, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm running on fumes here. <laughs> yeah, that was that the... Um... Like, Aurora wants to do like two or three things a turn, but all of them take an action and none a bonus action. <laughs> It's like, should I go to try and paral uh, petrify the toy demon, or should I heal, or should I... I don't know. Yep, the, the running gun, or the running guns blazing, had a certain combat level. Uh, sneaking or waiting till later would have lessened the combat level, mm. but hey, y'all... Came in, came in, gunning. You've done good so far. You're down to kind of like their last, uh, last waves here. Yeah, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this, I think. Probably, maybe. Yeah. Biggest deciding factor for me for the attack was that the dryad was carved up. Yeah. Yeah, that was like <laughs> yeah. if the dryad wasn't carved up, I'd be like, yeah, let's wait and sneak in, but like, yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't for the Dryad being so wounded and the other centaur trying to say it's like protected. Yeah. You know, mm. Y'all are y'all are heroes. <laughs> For the people watching the stream and or the YouTube pod, that was episode 2 of Bug well, Beyond the Witch Light, the Lost Hearts uh, split, and yeah, we'll be back in two, like two weeks, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have fun guys. Yep. Next, next session will be March 10th. Yep, ciao.